and welcome back to my channel. It feels so weird saying that because it's like the first time of me doing it, but I'm really glad you guys like the idea of brownies. When I the first thought of it, and other people suggested it too, I was just saying it as like a pun off my last name being brown. But then a couple people pointed out that brownies is like a pun off brows too. So I thought it was kind of perfect because I do makeup and Disney and I just felt like it really fit me. So I'm so glad you guys like it and I'm I swear I'll get used to calling you guys that. It's just gonna take me like a hot second, but we'll get used to it. Anyways, tonight is part two of my Disney Q&A series. Obviously, I could not get to part one or all the videos in part one. Otherwise, it would take forever or it was like a half an hour long. So this one's gonna be long too. Stay tuned. It's gonna be a long one, but I hope you guys are so excited. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if you do enjoy seeing these types of videos and let's get started. Our first question comes from Danica Strileski. Sorry if I just watched that. She says, when is a good time to visit the parks month-wise and also good places to stay in Disney World? Basically, any time that that goes along with like a school break for so either like winter break or summer break or even like spring break any of those breaks is a bad time to go to Disney because a lot of people have little kids those kids are in school and the only time they can afford to miss school is on their break so you can pretty much guarantee the month of December not good time to go same with the beginning of January also spring break months pretty much covers March and April because of all the different schools in the US and and then summer break, I would say probably June to beginning of September, not a good time to visit the park. It's going to be super crowded. June and July and August especially is going to be very hot, very humid, a whole lot of the crowds, not a ton of fun. A lot of the families that are visiting Disney World and Disneyland can't afford to take their kids out of school for a prolonged amount of time. So they typically like to go when the students are on break, which just so happens to be during those times. So I would say the best times to go are May, end of April, May is pretty good because it's right before summer and right after spring break. Also in fall, that's when everyone's getting back to school. That's like a key time for people to be in school and not at the parks. So September, October, beginning of November, end of November kind of starts that busy season. And then also I would say the tail end of January and the whole month of February is also a pretty good time to go. So if you're thinking about when you want to go and you can't remember all those different months, just try to think, okay, would kids be on a break of some sort during this time? And if the answer is yes, maybe you might want to plan your trip for a different time of the year. Oh, and for good places to stay, honestly, I haven't really stayed in the hotels a lot just because when I was living there, I lived there, I had an apartment that I was staying in, and when I visit, I was thankfully fortunate enough to have friends that still worked there and lived in the area, so I would stay with them. So I'm not really sure about great places to stay, but there is a website called Mouse Savers. The person who started it actually lives in Washington and I've met them, so cool. But they are a great resource if you're trying to find good deals on places to stay, either in the Orlando Disney World area, but also in Anaheim as well. No lie, I'm kind of nervous to answer this next one, but K. Gastelum asks, what is the biggest thing I got away with at Disney? Whew. Well, it's a good thing I don't work there anymore. Let's just say that. Um, let me think. Uh, okay, so to be totally honest, I'm a goody two-shoes. I won't lie. I follow all the rules, like driving or at work or in school. Like, I was literally goody two-shoes, totally afraid of getting in trouble. So there wasn't a whole lot that I did that or got away with just because I never really pushed the buttons. Um, I think the biggest thing I got away with, I guess, is just taking pictures backstage. Let's be honest. Everyone does it. Everyone says it don't do it they do it sneakily but everyone takes pictures backstage they're smart enough not to post them like I would never post my photos um but yes uh people do take pictures backstage I've done it before um I think that's probably it but okay if you guys want to hear a good story I know someone who actually stole like an entire costume from Disney I guess I don't know if it's true or not because I never saw it but they were saying how they stole an entire costume which is crazy to me because like that's like I would never even try that um but I've never done anything like that that's for sure but yeah I I really didn't try anything um a good thing to know with Disney is you can lose your job like that I love the company obviously I love the company and I just didn't really try things because I was really aware of how easy it is to lose your job with Disney um basically they can replace you like nobody's business so I just played it smart and just really didn't push the envelope um but yeah, it's like if you take pictures backstage, you get fired. And there's a lot of different things. Like if you break character integrity while on set, you get fired. I guess the worst thing I did was take photos backstage, but 
I don't feel like it's that bad because everyone did it. <laughs> Random Disney asks, what is the best way to save a money at Disney? I would say honestly just bringing your food because they charge a buttload of money for the food everywhere. You are allowed to bring in lunch and snacks so if you're going to the park for a day and you're trying to save money, honestly just bring your own food from home. I think it will save you a ton of money especially since it costs like $15-$20 dollars a meal. I think the one biggest tip you could do to save money is just bringing your own food. Anna Welsh asks tips for DCP, the application, web-based interview, and phone interview. I kind of briefly mentioned this in my part one talking about what's the best tip to get past the application stage. I think just actually in the entire process in general think about what Disney values as a company and try to align yourself and try to make yourself the best, most perfect Disney employee based off their values, which are safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. If you work there, you have it ingrained in your memory and you just know it by heart. But um, those are the four values. And if you can try to align yourself um, both with the web-based interview and then the application and also with the phone interview, just try to tie back. And even before the phone interview, which I have a video on, and I also have a blog about just the general application process as a whole. So if you guys haven't seen that, I would highly recommend that. Um, but as a whole when doing the interview, I would just kind of write some things out beforehand and have that with you ready to go, like good examples of how you represent those values so that when you're talking on the phone, you can kind of pull them back to the forefront of your memory a little bit easier. Jamie Cameron asks, what are my go-to rides to hit right away if I'm there right at Rope Drop? Well, first of all, if you know me, I am I love to sleep in. It's like one of my favorite pastimes. Sleeping is the best. So I actually was never there for a Rope Drop when I worked there. I was only there one time for rope drop and that was my last visit. It wasn't even when I worked there. Let's just say hypothetically speaking, if I was there for rope drop, what would I do? Gosh, that's a hard question. It depends on the theme park. So let's just say Disneyland since I was there last. If I was at Disneyland, I love Indiana Jones. It's very unique to that park. You can't do that at Magic Kingdom even though the dinosaur ride is pretty much the same thing. I just love Indiana Jones. So if I were to do a ride right at rope drop, I would probably do that. And then um, after I was done with that because that ride gets so crowded so fast, I would do some other rides in the area that also get really popular like Pirates of the Caribbean, maybe Haunted Mansion, Splash Mountain, Thunder Mountain, all those big rides because they're all one kind of concentrated area and it's easy to do. So if you're there at Rope Drop and you have one big ride that you want to do, maybe do some other rides in the area too just to kind of get them out of the way before all the crowds come in in the morning. Emerson Grady asks, when is a good time to do the DCP? So I feel like to be honest, it's really just up to you, which I know is the answer you probably want to hear, but it really is up to you. But I will tell you the pros and cons for doing it earlier in your college career and later in your college career because I chose to do it at the very end. Um, so I'll start with that. I went when I was a senior, actually I went after I graduated. And the reason why I did that or the way I was able to do that is I applied my very last semester of senior year, which was kind of risky, but I got in and then once I graduated I was able to do the fall DCP which was amazing because my biggest fear is I didn't want to miss any sort of schooling while I was there so I didn't have to miss school which was great I didn't have to miss out on any college experiences which was another one of my concerns but I did notice when I was there I felt really old because most people are uh, most people would say are sophomores and juniors not really freshmen because you can't really apply freshman year unless you're it's your second semester so most people are sophomores and juniors and a lot of the events were fun, but I just kind of felt old when I was there. And I felt a little bit less um, interested in some of the events because of that. And I guess a pro for going if you are a sophomore or a junior is most of the people you're going to meet are the same age. And if you absolutely love it, you might have the opportunity to do a second or third program. Like my friend Mandy, who was my roommate when I was there, she was on her second program when I was on my first because she'd already done it earlier on in her college career. So. Those are kind of some pros to both sides of it, is one of them you don't have to miss out on anything if that's a big concern of yours, whereas the other one is you'll, you'll make friends that are kind of similar in age and then you could go back if you wanted to. I guess whatever is more important to you, just kind of keep that in mind when you're applying. Um, also, it is a bit risky to just apply your senior year because if you don't get it, you kind of lose all your opportunities. So. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what's the best time for you, but just hopefully this helps you make that decision for yourself. Davika Paul asks, can you explain more about the WBI, which is a web-based interview for the DCP program? What jobs prepare me to be a character attendant or a character performer? So the WBI or web-based interview um, 
from what I remember, it's a part of the application itself, but it basically just asks you what jobs would you be interested in, which park would you be interested in working at, um, also your, I think it asks for your resume and your job experience, and when you're writing that in, make sure that you do your best to tie your job experience back into the values of the company and try to relate that as much as possible to help you. Web-based interview, WBI comes first, and then you have the phone interview afterwards if you're selected to move on to that stage. And then what job is there preparing you to be a character attendant or performer? Honestly, I would just say any opportunity you have to do improv or storytelling is a huge role in both of those jobs. So as a character attendant, when the characters would go to wherever they were going off to, I had to tell the guests where they were going. And so there's a lot of storytelling and improv in that. And then same with performing, you are just telling stories pretty much all day long. And if you're still in school, a lot of schools, middle schools too, have acting classes. I've been acting since I was like in elementary school. So I love it and I think there's always lots of opportunities to practice that. Holly McRobb asks, what was it like leaving school for the college program? Did you go back to college after? If so, what was it like? So I kind of already mentioned this. Um, Luckily for me, I didn't have to choose. I think if I did, it would have been really hard because I have the biggest FOMO of them all. I have the worst fear of missing out. So my biggest concern is that if I left school um, to go do the program, would I be missing out on a fun part of college, like college memories I can never get back. So for me, I was really thankful that I was able to do it after I had graduated because I still got the best of both worlds. So it wasn't that bad leaving because I had already graduated. I think it would be hard for me if I had to go back to college and if I had to leave college to do that but luckily the way it worked out for me I got the best of both worlds. Katya who is awesome she's always commenting on my videos and she's like the sweetest person ever asked a lot of questions but to sum it up she asked do characters know about other characters meaning that if you asked Mulan about hanging out with Princess Aurora would she understand what that is like and essentially when you're meeting the characters in the parks it's like you're meeting them while they're in the middle of their own story so that's why Rapunzel still has her long blonde hair her hair is not cut like mine <laughs> And that's why the beast meets as a beast and he's not a prince because you're meeting him in the middle of the story. So if you were to ask them about anything outside their stories, and I get this question a lot about like sequels. I think that actually is a question that someone else asked later on, but about sequels and asking them about it. I'm sure they would like acknowledge it and reference it, um, but they won't bring it up on their own, if that makes sense. Terrible at usernames, I love that, asks, does Disney provide specific makeup for performers to wear? So yes, if you are in a role that would require you to wear makeup, in a certain fashion, Disney does provide that. And that's a big reason as to why I won't talk about how I did my makeup when I was working for the company or what makeup I used because I do feel like that is a company secret for lack of a better word or company information that I'm not really entitled to share um, and that's why I don't share a lot about my training and things like that especially since I didn't even know how other performers did their own makeup if they had a different role than me. So if I didn't know how they did their makeup I'm pretty sure I'm not really entitled to share it with everyone else publicly, publicly. But yes, Disney does provide makeup. If you are in a role that requires makeup, they will provide it for you and teach you how to do it as well. Your girl Liv L asks, how do character tenants get photos with the characters they're working with? Well, there are times where there aren't guests around and maybe the characters will be kind enough to take a photo with their character tenant. It's not uncommon, but that does happen. So I'm sure you guys have seen photos of me posting pictures when I was a character attendant and there are opportunities when the guests are around either before the park opens or when it closes. Um, that the character attendants may or may not have an opportunity to take photos with the characters themselves, which can be really fun, um, but it's not a guaranteed thing. It doesn't happen all the time, but every once in a while they have the opportunity. Rachel Ann asks, has anyone ever sung to Ariel while visiting her in the grotto? Will PhotoPass photographers use my phone to record video record my interaction with the characters? Do characters know about the sequels to the movies? Aha, see, that's where it was. I knew someone else asked this question. So um, I already answered the sequel question, but has anyone ever sung to Ariel in the grotto? Yes, and I'm pretty sure I've either talked about this before or I've posted the video. I know I've posted the video for sure. I just don't remember which video it was at this point, but I did talk about that where a group came in and sung to Ariel Negrotto and they were amazing. They were there for a choir trip and it was so much fun. It definitely made Ariel's day. It was pretty cool. I happened to be in the room too when it was happening and it was pretty dang magical. And then about the photo pass, yes. If you just ask them nicely, again, I wouldn't just like hand them your phone and expect them to to just video record, but if you just ask them nicely like, hey, would you mind taking a video of my interaction? I'm sure they'd be more than happy to do that. Or better idea if the character tenant isn't busy you could always ask them to that way you can get photo pass photos of your interaction while the character tenant is taking a video my dog wants to say hi come on up come on up this is zoe oh yes 
How's it going? Oh, thank you. Yes, these are all our friends. Oh, yes. No. Aw, I just love you so much. She's gonna be joining me now, apparently. Olivia Noel asks, if you were to go back, what role slash roles would you like to have? Performer, character tenant, etc. So two roles, um, let's just do outside performer and character tenant, but two other roles that I would have loved to do, and I actually said I want to do that when I was applying for the DCP, are the BBD Bobby, BBD, BBD Bobbity Boutique and the photo pass roles. So I love taking photos, if you guys haven't noticed, and I also do makeup. I you know, I swear to you, I was planning on doing a natural look today and this is how it turned out, but you know, sometimes when you're playing with makeup, things just happen. I always love doing makeup and I thought that'd be really fun since I had experience in both those things. I feel like I'd really enjoy those roles. Flavia is Aguirre asks, which is better, Disney World or Disneyland and why? Oh my gosh, it's still a loaded question. Um, I actually really wanted to do a series on this and I probably still will, comparing both Disney World and Disneyland. I kind of already did that unintentionally with the character video. I was going to do a video talking about about meeting characters at Disneyland. Actually, I wasn't even planning on doing a video talking about how to meet characters at Disneyland until I realized it was extremely different from meeting characters at Disney World. So then I created a Disneyland video talking about that. But I wanted to do a series comparing the two parks, talking about the food options, some of the rides, and different things like that, and guests, and how things work. So I was going to do a video comparing the two. Better? I don't... I honestly, truly, this is not just me BSing it, I honestly don't know because when I was a kid, I grew up going to Disneyland and I thought Disneyland was the greatest place in the world. And then after working at Disney World, I really like Disney World as an adult. I think it's just so much fun and there's so many more things to do than Disneyland. Um, and last time I visited Disneyland, I, I really... I was like, man, I kind of miss Disney World. So right now it's Disney World when I was a kid, it's Disneyland, so... I'm a little biased, but uh, yeah. Forever Ava asks, I know I wouldn't get to choose which, which role I'm in if I'm hired as a performer, but is there a way to know which character I would be best suited to be friends with? And this is a really tough question. Honestly, I get a lot of questions about this today from people saying, hey, do I look like a certain character or can you, can you kind of guess which role I'd be in? And to be totally honest, I have no idea. I'm not trained as a casting director. I can only talk about my experience going through as a performer. I have no idea what features about my face or the way I look made them decide like, oh, you're gonna be in this role. Like other than the fact that like when I got there, I saw, oh, I look like a ton of other people that have this exact same role. I can totally see it now, but I don't really know what about my features designated me to a certain role. So because I don't know that, I just don't feel like it's fair to tell you guys that because I could be totally wrong and I don't want to steer you guys in the wrong direction. Avery Palmieri asks, I'm wondering how the characters would react to things like the Yanny versus Lauren, Laurel, or the things like the dress, would they be allowed to answer? That is a really tough question. I believe they'd be able to answer. Let's just say you played them the clip or showed them a picture of it. Um, I think they'd be able to talk about what they thought about it. Um, but at the same time, if you ask them like, oh, what do you think about Yanny versus Laurel? They're not going to know what you're talking about because that's not a part of their story and that exists outside their kingdom so they're not going to know off the top of their head what that is but if you were to play it for them ask what they thought they might tell you their thoughts on it but to be safe I would just ask them questions about things from their story because they know all about that and you can ask them plenty of questions that I'm sure they'd love to answer. Dusty Regan asks about Mickey's not so scary Halloween party and if I can share as many details as possible. I think I might just create a whole video on this because I could talk a lot about the whole party situation and what that's like. Basically if you've never been to a Halloween party, you pay about actually anywhere up to like over a hundred dollars if you're going on Halloween, but you can pay anywhere between I would say 80 to a hundred dollars for a couple hours in Magic Kingdom. I think it's about five or six hours. Um, and you go to Magic Kingdom and they have a couple different special events that you can't get during the daytime. So you get the parade, you get the shows, and then you also get the special character meet and greets. And there's a trigger treating trail. So there's a couple different reasons as to why people do it. Honestly, it is pretty pricey for the amount of time. And unfortunately, even as hard as you wanted to try, if you were to try to do absolutely everything, meet every single unique character, see all the shows and praise and everything like that, you wouldn't be able to get everything done in about five hours. So you have to really pick and choose and plan out what you want to do. And what I would do too is when you get there, ask the character tenants which characters are out meeting for the night because they don't have that posted anywhere. They like to do different things every year to just to make it more special. So I would definitely go and ask and see which characters are going to be meeting. You can pretty 
pretty much guarantee Jack and Sally are going to be meeting in there. There's a little spot called the gazebo. They'll be meeting there. Um, and there's a couple other characters too that meet, like villains that will meet during this time. Alexiana Villegas asks, thoughts on the new Pixar Pier? So I've never been there, so I feel like it's not even fair for me to share my thoughts. I think it's awesome. Um, I've been going to California Avengers since I was a kid, since it opened. So I remember what it was like when it opened. You go in Paradise Pier and they have the Beach Boys playing and they had the Sunshine Square and then when you walk in the park and they've honestly completely redone that entire park like it's doesn't even look like the same park from when it first started so they're constantly changing it I'm not very surprised I'm beyond sad to be totally honest that Ariel's Grotto is gone that was one of my favorite places to go as a kid because you get to meet all the princesses and when I was going there as a kid you could still meet Ariel as a mermaid in the restaurant which is pretty cool but I totally understand I think it's a really smart idea on their part because California Adventure when you first opened it really wasn't geared towards kids it was kind of more geared towards adults there weren't really a lot of fun things for kids to do so I think they're doing a great job of rebranding and adding more things to include Pixar and other movies that people love I'm really excited to go on the credit coaster because my girl Helen she is a big part of it and I'm really excited to go on that Rosie Morgan asks is it fun to hang out with Eric as well as Ariel um I would guess so. I've never had the opportunity to do that. Um, if you meant like while I was still working there, I never got the opportunity to hang out with both of them at the same time, which is pretty sad to me, but that's okay. We're not upset. Um, but I have gone and visited a couple months after I left. They had the Bon Voyage breakfast, which I mentioned in my last video. Um, and I thought it was the most amazing breakfast ever because you have Flynn Rider, Rapunzel, Eric and Ariel. Um, but they started doing that after I left. So I never really got the chance to spend a lot of time with both of them. But when I've gone to visit them, it looks like so much fun. And it's so nice that Prince Eric is finally back in the parks. Brianna Cunningham asks, I have this dream of working at Disney World as a performer. How do they assign you to specific roles? I already kind of mentioned this, but going back to my first uh, point, I made a couple of questions ago. <laughs> I honestly have no idea how casting selects people, what they look for. Um, I think people, I th overall, I think people who like ha present themselves confidently with a great smile, I think that will definitely help you when you're going to the auditions. But when it comes to like facial features, I have no idea. So unfortunately, I can't really answer that because I would never want to steer you in the wrong direction. And I have no training as a casting director. But overall, when you're going to auditions, I think if you just present yourself as joyfully as possible, stand confidently and smile really, really big when they're looking at you, I think that will help you a lot. I just don't know for specific roles, like what exactly determines what you get. <laughs> Alexis O'Donnell asks, I work PhotoPass. That's awesome. Uh, so I'd like to know how performers feel towards PhotoPass and if they like when PhotoPass helps them, like the attendant does or if it bothers them when we try to do an attendant's job. I actually loved working with PhotoPass. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun both when I was performing and when I was an attendant. I just feel like what, from what I've learned actually in working in two different roles is you really need people who are working together in all three of those roles, attendant, performer, and photo pass, to make the entire interaction experience a great one. One person can truly make the entire experience miserable. So let's just say the photo pass is really doing their job, they're taking a while, or they're trying to really over control the situation or telling the characters how they want them to pose, different things like that. Um, it can really harm the entire interaction and make it slow down, maybe make it less magical. If the attendant isn't really doing their job, they're just kind of hanging back, they're not helping the guests get their books ready, Ready, helping take photos that will slow down the interaction to make it less magical and same for the performers too if they're not really in it and they're just kind of taking their time or they're not being as punctual as they should be or they're being at the spots and the locations when the guests expect them to be they make it harder on the attendance so after experiencing a couple different roles I was able to see how each role was so important and it wasn't just like a one-star show. So to best explain this in cheerleading terms, because I was a cheerleader too, um, you have the flyer, which is the person who does all the flips and stuff. They're the ones who you think are doing all the hard work, but really what you don't notice is the three people that are holding them up there, they're really doing all the hard work and the flyer's the one taking credit for it. But if you have a bad base or the base doesn't catch you, like the entire pyramid crumbles. It's the exact same thing where you really need to have a strong photo pass, character attendant, and performer to make the entire interaction magical and flow smoothly. So to answer your question about how 
character performers or attendants feel about PhotoPass. I can only speak by myself, but I absolutely love PhotoPass. I had so much fun with all my PhotoPass and I just got to know them and goof around with them and it was honestly like when I had a good photo pass in there who take really good shots and made it really quick and easy um I I loved it I felt like it's flowed really smoothly I think it's great that they're in there because they can catch the magical moments so the guests can just enjoy their visit so I have nothing but great things to say about photo pass I think the only time it was frustrating at times is because some of the photo pass are used to running the show so to speak out on Main Street where they're the ones taking photos of families they tell them how to pose and especially at any magical photo spots they're the ones directing the families Families and telling them how to pose differently or taking the photos for them so they're kind of used to running the show in that location but when they go to a character meet and greet some of them still carry that in there when really you're there to meet the characters not the photo pass so that was the only time it caused not even like a conflict but it was a little hard to work with um, but other than that I really love working the full pass both in both roles it was a lot of fun and lastly I wanted to throw a question in there because I've gotten this a couple different times and I might make a video talking about this in depth if you guys are interested I guess let me know um, but the question is was I fired so just to clear the air I was not fired I actually chose to leave on my own I probably left sooner than I wanted to but for a couple different reasons I really wanted to leave while I still loved the company I knew a lot of people that got burnt out and I didn't want to get to that point. I also knew that I didn't see myself living in Florida long term. The culture is very different from the West Coast and Seattle specifically and I just really really missed um, the whole culture of Seattle and just being able to go wakeboarding and hiking in the summertime and being able to go skiing in the winter. I just love being able to do outdoor activities and that was really hard for me living in Florida because you have the theme parks which is really fun. Obviously it's my little kid dream to go to the theme parks whenever I wanted. But and the beach is really cool too. The beaches are awesome. But I really just learned how much I loved Seattle when I was there. So that is why I left the company. I have absolutely no ill will towards the company at all. I absolutely love my time there. I loved everyone I worked with. I mean, I was sad when I left, but I knew that God had bigger and better plans in store for me. And I knew that he had me there for the set amount of time that I was there for a reason. And the best part is, is I decided pretty early on when I was going to leave. So that way I could really appreciate every single interaction, every single shift, every time I went to work, because I knew that my time there was limited. And by living with that mindset, I feel like I just made the most of it. And I had fun. Even on the hard days, I was able to turn around and just be like, nope, like this is awesome because this is all I've ever wanted. And now I get the chance to do that. I think that does get really hard for people if they don't have that mindset or they don't know maybe when they're going to leave because it just feels like it just drags on forever and I would have absolutely hated for that to get to the point where it felt like a job and then it was no longer fun for me. Anyways, that is it for my questions. Thank you guys so much for asking amazing, amazing questions. I love being able to interact with you guys. And for me, it's kind of helpful too because I just kind of forget what you guys are interested in or what you guys might not know that you want me to talk about because I just already know it. So it's like hard for me to figure out what other people might not know. So I really appreciate all the amazing questions and I'm sure I'll be doing another Disney Q&A just because I did one not that long ago. I thought there's no possible way they would have more questions and here I am doing part two because there were so many questions. Questions. So thank you brownies so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!